How we doing, guys? Good to see all of you. Thank you so much for having me. A real honor. Before I get into all this, I want you guys to do me a real quick favor. And if you came here today to just get a little bit better, make some noise. Yeah. So, how many people here are already Zero to Diamond members? All right. You guys are part of the fastest growing coaching and real estate community on the face of the planet. Clap it up for yourselves. Now, I don't have a whole lot of time today. Um, normally I speak a lot longer than this. So I do, what I want to accomplish is I just want to tell you a little bit about myself and my mission, what I'm trying to do here. Okay, I grew up in Orange Beach, Alabama. Who knows anything about that? It's right on the Florida line. We have white sandy beaches, palm trees, and million dollar condos. It's a beautiful place. So I grew up there, and I really didn't realize I was growing up in the middle of paradise until I grew up and realized by going to other places how good I really had it. But when I was a teenager, I started roofing houses with my father. He owned a roofing business. And through that was where really I learned everything about hard work. And from that point on, watching my father work and, and all the hours and everything he did, it instilled it in me, and I'm just a hard worker. I just love work. So when I'm 20, I ended up going to four colleges in two years, fell to history class, and said, college is not for me. So I went for my real estate license, one class, you get your real estate license, you go to work. I like that. Because in the, in the back of my head, I was thinking, doctor, lawyer, 10 years of school, Real estate, one class. So I get in real estate and I think, this is it. I'm retired, I'm gonna make all this money. So I quit roofing, I do real estate for 30 days, I don't sell anything, I have to go back to roofing houses. Now I'm roofing houses and trying to do real estate at the same time, trying to figure this whole thing out. It took me eight months. Now this is 2002. There was no Facebook, Zillow, um, Instagram, Nothing, right? Eight months to make my first sale, trying to figure this thing out. From there, I sold two properties a year for a little while. Okay, I'm 20 years old, I'm selling two properties a year. All of a sudden, the market explodes. Prices double in a couple of years. And I'm literally 23 years old as a self-made millionaire. And as a 23-year-old self-made millionaire, I'm probably going to make a lot of bad decisions, right? So I do. I, I buy a lot of stuff I shouldn't buy. I bought a lot of property I thought was a really good idea, but the debt that went behind it was not. When the market crashed, I lost every single penny and some. And now I'm sitting here with nothing at all. I'm broke. I'm bankrupt. I'm sleeping on friends' couches. I went back to roofing houses. 2005 range, that's when the market really started tanking in my market. I'm back roofing houses. I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm, in, a, I'm in a Cadillac ST, uh, uh, CVSV, CTSV, right? Corvette engine Cadillac that I bought, roofing houses out of it before I ended up losing the car. So I'm sitting here, I'm roofing houses, I had it all, I'm, I'm back to nothing, and I landed a job on an oil rig. I took the job on the oil rig because I just want to get better every day. If I'm going to get knocked back down, that's fine. I'll just start from there and just get better from there every day. But it was during this time when I had nothing, that's when I figured a lot out about myself and the business and how this thing really works. And I was super curious of why I lost everything. So I read 100 books. Over about two years, I read 100 books, all kinds of books. I studied the market. I watched the top producers that stayed in the market through the crash. I watched the agents like myself that had to get out of the business. I still had MLS and everything. I was studying all this stuff and watching all this stuff happen from afar. And at the end of the day, what I realized was this. The first half of my career was all about the deal, all about the money, all about the transaction, all about getting them to sign the line, all about the transaction. And what I realized, somewhere along the way, I looked on MLS and I noticed clients that I represented when the market was great, 
were still buying stuff when the market was down. They were getting rid of the stuff that they overpaid for. They were still doing deals. Clients that I represented. But I was out of the business. I was on an oil rig. That was an eye opener to me. And that's when I realized relationships over transactions. Because if I would have maintained the relationships through that, my biggest few takeaways were this. Closings happen every day. Regardless of what the market does, market conditions do not matter. A lot of people worry about a crash coming up sometime in the near future. It doesn't matter to us agents. Closings continue to happen every day. It's not our job to try to figure out the market or to believe in scarcity or abundance. It's our job to help people through whatever situation is going on in the market. Like whatever the current situation is, I'm a real estate agent, what, what in the world can I do to help you today? The market's crashing. Do you want to buy, sell, or hold? There's only three options for a property owner in a market crash. They're going to buy because it's cheap, and they want to buy right now while it's cheap. They got to sell, they're in trouble, the market crash, or they're just going to hold on and ride it out. They're going to do one of those three things. And if you can contact enough people during that time and say, hey, what in the world can I do for you? The market has crashed. You buying, selling, or holding? And whichever of the three that you're going to do, is there an agent that you're going to work with on that? These are the conversations that we need to have, and lots of them. Market share to me, what I realize, is not how many listings, closings, deals, any of that. It's how many real, lifelong relationships you have with property owners in your area. Whatever agent has the most owns the market share. Real lifelong relationships that mean something. So I realize closings happen every day and I have to value relationships over the transactions, not the other way around. So I started building my business back using these philosophies, little by little. 2007 is when I got back in the business. I got laid off from the oil rig. Right, the economy was even that bad, they were laying people off on the oil rig. So I start building my business back, I start gaining some traction, I start selling some things, and I'm happy. Like, I'm back. I didn't, think, I didn't know if I'd ever sell property ever again. Right? So I'm doing good, a couple years goes by, and boom, the BP oil spill hits. The BP oil spill hit my area like a ton. Because we're right on the coast. Everybody was scared about the poisons and this and that. We had no vacationers that year. Owners were dumping their property, scared, it's gonna be black seas. And I saw this as an opportunity to test out what I learned in the big crash in this little mini recession. That's what it ended up being. And so that year, 2010, when the BP oil spill hit, I made 50% more money than I did in 2009. In a down year, in a horrible year, in a scary year. And that's when I realized that I was on to something. I had something. I didn't have it all figured out yet, but I, was, I knew that I, I was on to something because my goal was to make it back and never lose it again. I never wanted to have that feeling ever again of making it and losing it. So I had to figure out what I did wrong, what decisions did I make that led me to losing everything. And so through that, Making it through the oil spill, making more money when agents were leaving the business, moving to Birmingham. I, that was my aha moment that I was really on to something. So from there, I just started to continue, continue on the path. Another thing that I realized, and this, this is something I really want you to, not, not in one ear and out the other, I want you to really think about this. This is a big one for me. I realized that business is 110% unlimited. For every single agent, there's more loyal clients for every single agent than you could ever handle. Period. Because it's just what I said more than you can handle. Think about this the industry is enormous. The industry in Orlando, let's say, is enormous. Each agent is a microscopic dot inside this huge industry. The volume that, that, that happens. Is, is enormous and we're a microscopic dot. If the market 
crashes and goes down 50%, we're still a microscopic dot in this huge industry. Closings continue to happen every single day. I'm telling you, one, one concept about business being unlimited is the fact that everyone here has a different personality and you connect with people differently. Therefore, because of the fact that you can't talk to every single person in your market, every single property owner, ever in your life, it'll never happen, and you have an unlimited amount of these property owners to, to conversate with and find out if there's a connection or not, it creates an unlimited opportunity forever. You can't do it all. So I continued on this path. By 2014, I was selling 100 properties a year, single agent. One assistant. I've done it every single year since, and I'm still doing it. I was in the corner over here before the speech texting buyers and sellers and agents and my assistant. Send the contract. Let's get this signed. We want to come back at this price. I'm in the trenches. So about two years ago, I wrote two books. I felt like I had figured out a lot about real estate and I felt like I needed to share that. I went and did a speech in Biloxi. It was my first speech, 2016, and the response was incredible. And that was my aha moment for, for the writing and speaking and coaching business that I'm now in, that I needed to pursue it because so many people came up to me and had questions and said thank you and, and really related to, to my story and what I was trying to tell them. So from there, I just kept taking another step, another step, another step, and here we are today. I have 12,000 agents in a free coaching program. And why am I doing it for free? Because I'm literally on a mission to help reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry one agent at a time, and it's happening. I'm getting messages every week from agents saying, thank you so much, I was about to have to quit I found you somewhere four months ago, I started implementing your stuff, and now I'm, I've, got, I've got listings, I've got pending deals, I've got closings, thank you so much. And those emails is what keeps me going. So, I think that, just to give you guys a little bit of, of, of how I'm, what I'm doing for agents, um, I think the biggest thing with you know, the, the failure rate in the industry and, and mainstream coaching and, you know, they put it in a box. Every agent says this to all these prospects and you follow up exactly like this with every, every prospect. How can that be? Every agent has a different personality and every prospect has a different situation. You don't follow up with everybody the same exact way, right? So I think this. It's about the fact that if you wouldn't be here right now if you didn't care about people and that you weren't a hard worker and that you, you, you aren't dependable. You're not professional. You wouldn't be here if you weren't those things. You are those things. You're everything that a client wants in an agent. Here's the disconnect. You haven't figured out exactly or realized that you need to figure out how to effectively communicate those qualities to your prospects. We have to, and this is what I'm doing in my coaching program, I'm teaching agents how to effectively communicate who they are with their personality, what their strengths are to their prospects. And that's different for every agent. We can't put agents in a box. So, I think communicating who you are as a person, that you care about people, that you have the right intent, right? Conversion. We're trying to convert too quick. First, we got to connect with our prospects, and then we convert. I like to say 95% low pressure, 5% high pressure, but when do you use the 5%? It's after you've made that connection. Let's go deeper with it. How do we connect? By finding out why they're wanting to buy or sell. When you're talking to a prospect and you realize that they do want to buy or sell something in the near future, the next question should be, why? 
What's the bigger reason going on in their life that's causing them to make this decision to buy or sell a piece of property? Did their mom die? Did their kids go to college? Did they get a new job? Did they lose a job? Are they relocating? Is it an investment? There's something going on bigger. There's a bigger picture thing going on. And if we're missing that, that whatever that bigger picture is for that prospect, then we're not going as deep as we could with the connection. And when we can go deeper with the connection and find out why people are doing what they're wanting to do, we, we really connect and now we're their agent for life. Every prospect that you do this with is worth 10 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career. Through repeat business referrals and referrals of referrals. So this is just this is just a taste of what I'm doing. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time. There's a lot more. Uh, ZeroToDiamond.com or there's a number, there's a there's a thing you can text. List to last to two two eight two eight. Um, there's a 90 day action plan. This is exactly how I would do my business if I were brand new in today's market. 90 day action plan, full course, we do live training sessions twice a month with me. You have direct access to me. How many people here are DMing me on Instagram? Up high, up high. Keep your hand up if I didn't respond. I answer every single DM on Instagram. Why? I'm spending hours. I get 150 to 200 DMs a day. I'm spending hours on this answering specific questions for every single agent that needs help for no, no money. I'm not asking for a dime. Why am I doing this? Because I literally want you guys to succeed. How many people here are finding value in my YouTube videos? Um, I guess that's all I have today. My time's up. Um, I just want to say that, that I love you guys. I'll do anything for you. Reach out if there's anything in the world I can do for you. We'll talk to you guys soon.